Okay, here we are using heat of fusion or vaporization to find the heat needed to melt or boil a substance. And so first, before we jump into this problem, let's make sure we understand what this heating curve here is showing us. Now for this particular substance, I have water, but of course in the problem in this example, we're uh, talking about hexane, but it's gonna, the heating curve is gonna follow the exact same uh, type of layout or blueprint, okay? So here for water as our substance, this is, um, this is the trend that we follow when we start with solid water. So water freezes below zero degrees Celsius. So here we have ice, okay? So we have ice and what we're doing here is we're applying heat or energy and this is temperature. So below zero, we have ice. As I apply heat or energy, the temperature of the ice goes up, but it's still ice. Now at zero degrees Celsius, the energy applied is no longer raising the temperature of the water or of the ice, but it is um, being uh, used to break those attractions, the, 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 the bonds between water molecules, like the hydrogen bonds, those very close intermolecular forces that are holding it into a very tight crystal structure. So as I apply energy in this zone right here, the temperature doesn't go up, but here the ice is melting. So when I get from this point to this point, I no, no longer have any ice, it's all water. Here I have all ice, here I have a mix. So once all the ice is melted, I have water, and as I apply heat, the temperature of the water is now going up. Now at this point, I have another phase change. You'll notice all the phase changes are these flat lines. So here I'm going from solid to liquid. Here I have to be going from liquid to gas. So as I apply energy here, the temperature doesn't go up, but now I am vaporizing all of the liquid water. So uh, you notice it takes a lot more energy to phase change from liquid to gas than it does from solid to liquid. Because here, um, the water molecules in, in, in ice and water are still very close, right? Solids and liquids are, are still condensed states. Gases, the molecules, the gas molecules are very spread out. So it takes a lot of energy to be able to completely break those water molecules apart and defeat the intermolecular forces like hydrogen bonding and dipole-dipole uh, interactions there, the two more, more prevalent ones. So this picture here, it's the same thing. It just summarizes what I just said. We have ice here below its freezing point. This is water again. Water freezes at zero, so we have ice. I'm heating the ice or the solid. Now it's melting. Now I have all liquid water, and as I apply heat, I'm heating the liquid. Then it starts to vaporize or boil. And then at this point, I have all water vapor. So here would be the the heat of vaporization. And here at this phase change is where the heat of fusion comes into play. Okay, so fusion is a phase change from solid to liquid and vaporization is phase change from liquid to gas. So you want to keep this right here, this this heating curve in mind as you tackle every single one of these problems, figure out where you're starting and where you're ending up. So let's look. We are starting with 111 grams of solid hexane, and we want to bring it to a temperature of negative 77.2 degrees Celsius, okay? All we're doing is going from solid to liquid. How do I know? Look here needed to melt. They did not say vaporize, they just said melt. Oh, so what is melting? That is, involves the heat of fusion. That's melting, going from solid to liquid. We're not gonna be even going past this, this point here, okay? All we're gonna do is heat up the solid hexane, melt it, and then heat the liquid hexane to some temperature. We're not even going to begin to vaporize it at all. So we're just looking to be doing those processes there in this problem, okay? So let's do step one.
okay? In step one, what are we doing again? We are melting 111 grams of solid hexane, all right? So we are melting 111 grams of solid hexane. Now, it doesn't say that we're heating up the solid uh, mexane, which, hexane, we're just melting it. So let's assume that we are at the flat point of that phase change, wherever it is. And of course, mexane, uh, hexane doesn't melt at zero degrees Celsius. This is for water, but let's just follow the same um, outline. So what we're doing now is we are going to find out how much energy is required to do this first step, which is to melt, okay, to melt the hexane. So uh, we need to get the heat of fusion for hexane, and I have that here. The heat of uh, fusion for hexane is 13.08 kilojoules per mole. So to figure out how much energy is required to melt 111 grams of solid hexane, let's convert this grams to moles. Why? Because I know how many kilojoules it takes to melt one mole of hexane. This is 13.8 kilojoules per one mole. If I convert this to moles, then I can figure out how many kilojoules it is to melt however many moles 111 grams is. So, 111 grams of hexane, C6H14, we're using chemistry one here. The molar mass of hexane is 86.18 grams of hexane in one mole. So the number of moles of hexane that I have, if grams cancels out, is equal to 1.2, let's round it to 1.29 moles of hexane, or C6H14. So I go back here and I take the heat of fusion of hexane, which is 13.08 kilojoules per mole, and I multiply it by the amount of hexane that I have here that I'm melting in moles, 1.29 moles. Now look at my units here. Moles cancels. And what I'm left with is 16.8. I'm just going to take it to two decimal places, 25 kilojoules. Okay? That's how many kilojoules it takes to melt 111 grams of solid hex hexane. But guess what? We're not done. They said not only do we need to figure out how much energy is needed to melt 111 grams of solid hexane, but I also need to heat it to a temperature of negative 77.2. So not only did we melt it, there we go, we melted it, but we also need to heat it, right? Now we're not gonna vaporize it, so we're only gonna end up somewhere here, okay? So we melted it, and now we're heating it. So th this is only a two-step problem, melting, heating. So if I go back, let's figure out how much energy is needed to do the second step. Now, how would we do that? Well, we're gonna use something from Chem 1. We're gonna use this, the uh, specific heat capacity uh, formula as our connection okay, between the temperature change and the heat that's needed. If you remember from Chem 1 when we did calorimetry, we use this, Q is equal to M times C times delta T, where C represented the specific heat. So the specific heat of a substance is how much energy is required to raise one gram of the substance by one degree Celsius. So it makes sense why we need to consider that here. We're heating up a certain amount of hexane, right? 111 11 grams uh, to a temperature of negative 77.2 degrees Celsius. So let's break down this. Heat is equal to the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature, okay? So Q is gonna be equal to the mass, which is 111 grams, times the specific heat of hexane, 
which is given in Alex, the specific heat of hexane is 2.27 joules times gram uh, per Kelvin or degree Celsius. So here I'll just use degree Celsius since it'll make my units cancel out. And the temperature change, well, in order to find the temperature change, we have to ask ourselves, what temperature does hexane melt at? So hexane melts at negative 95.35 degrees Celsius, okay? Water melts at zero. So for hexane, this right here is actually negative 95.35. Really, 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 really cold, okay? And they want us to raise the temperature from this to negative uh, 77.2. So we need to raise it somewhere. It's going to be negative 77.2. It's going to be somewhere over here, okay? So somewhere in this area. We're going from negative 95.35 which is the melting point of hexane, we're gonna raise the temperature to negative 77.2. Question is, what uh, is the temperature difference between those two values? Negative 95.35 and negative 77.2. The difference is, it's going to be 18.15 degrees Celsius, okay? Notice this is a positive number. Why? Because the temperature is being raised, right? We are heating it and bringing the temperature up to negative 77.2, okay? So our delta T, our change in temperature right here, is going to be a change in temperature of 18.15 degrees Celsius. So let's check and see which units cancel out. This cancels, this cancels, and our answer is going to be left in joules, okay? So the heat flow is going to be 4,573.3 joules. And let's put it in uh, kilojoules to be in line with our first answer. So it'll be 4.5. 573 kilojoules. So what we've done is we found the amount of heat required for step one, which was simply to melt this hexane. Hexane melts at negative 95.35 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we melted it. We found the amount of heat for that. So it was equal to the heat of fusion, which is this, times the amount of hexane we had in moles, that's this many kilojoules. And then for step two, we heated that melted hexane from negative 95.35 degrees Celsius to negative 77.2 degrees Celsius. We, we uh, increased the temperature by 18.15 degrees Celsius. So we use this specific heat equation. Heat flow is equal to the mass times the specific heat, which was given. You have to look that value up in Alex times the change in temperature, which we just got by taking the difference between the starting and the final temperature, and we get this, okay? So to figure out the total amount of heat involved, we just add up Q for step one and for step two. So the Q total is equal to 16.85 kilojoules plus four 0.573 kilojoules, and that's a total of 21.4 kilojoules to, as they ask, three significant digits. So this would be my final answer.